That's what I want to talk about in these next 15 Baptist minutes. <laughs> now is the time. Uh, one of the most overlooked truths in the entire New Testament is the fact that Jesus had more than 12 disciples. In Luke chapter 9, you read about him giving a charge to the 12 disciples. Yet by the time you get into Luke's gospel chapter 10, you discover that there uh, were more than 70 additional disciples disciples. That term disciples simply means a student follower, uh, one who was so committed to the causes of God until they wanted to be connected to him and to follow him. This demonstrates that each and every one of us has a right, a reason, and a responsibility to take the message of the gospel and to help in growing the kingdom. We have a right to tell people about Jesus. We have a reason to tell people about Jesus. And then we have a responsibility to tell people about Jesus. First of all, this is not a part of the outline, but first of all, you've got a right to tell people about Jesus. Jesus. Because some folks in your family will try and tell you that you don't have a, a right to say nothing about the Lord because of some stuff you've been through. And reality is the only difference between their stuff and your stuff is that they know about your stuff and their stuff is still covered. And all of us in this room need to be thankful about the things in our lives that the Lord has yet to uncover. Yeah. Oh, you're going to be deep. You, you, you're going to be deep. Ain't no skeletons in your closet. Uh, for some, there, there are not skeletons in your closet. They still breathing. You still feeding them in the closet. But you got a right to help grow the kingdom of God. But then you got a reason. Because God has been so good to you. Yeah. And if God takes care of you at the level that he does, the least you can do is tell someone else about yeah. him. But then we have a responsibility to share the message of the gospel and to help the kingdom of God to grow. And I want to focus on that responsibility today. So here in Luke chapter 10, 70 of Jesus' student followers or disciples were used to turn the world upside down so that God could turn the world right side up. He worked through people uh, in his quest of making a difference in the lives of others. And now is the time for us to do the same. It was their job in Luke chapter 10. It is our job in 2019. They turned the world upside down because they were so faithful in their commitment to growing the kingdom. And God turned the world right side up so that all those who came to him, he changed them from the inside out. My contention is if he did it before, he can do it again. And he can turn the world upside down and turn right around and turn the world right side up. There are just three things that must be present if we are to be obedient to God and allowing him to do what he desires to do. Three things that God needs here is the first one. God needs a personal contribution, a personal contribution. There's something that every one of us can give that possesses the capacity to change the world that is around us, a personal contribution. Well, Pastor, can you be, so, can you be more specific? I'm so glad you asked. You all asked wonderful questions on fourth Sunday morning. This is for Sunday morning, is it not? Yes, 
Okay, because I, you know, I, I mess some stuff up sometimes. I at least want to know what day it is. Hey, here's the first thing you can do to turn the world upside down so that God can turn it right side up. You can pray. Every one of us ought to have a list of people whose salvation we're praying for. Doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to walk across the street. Uh, you don't even need a pen. You can use a crayon. You don't have to write out the whole name. You can just write out uh, the initials. If you don't know the name, you can write out what they mean to you in your life. Cashier at Walmart. Uh, a nurse's assistant at the doctor's office. Neighbor whose dog keeps making a mess in your yard. Whoever that person is, you can write that down all of us ought to have a prayer list with the names on it of people that we want the Lord to save. The first thing we can do is pray. The second thing you can do to help grow the kingdom is to invite. To invite. Invite people to your Jesus loving church. You can invite them. When one of the disciples of Jesus was being drawn to him, one of his friends said to him, we have found the Messiah. He is Jesus of Nazareth. And the man responded, Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And his friend's response was, come and see. Come and see. And what the Lord is looking for in this generation is some people who are willing to say to their friends, their neighbors, their co-workers, just come and see. Well, I don't want to go to nobody's church because churches are full of hypocrites. Come on, we got room for one more. I'm sorry, I'm not one of them deep preachers. I'm just one. You can pray and you can invite. Here's something else you can do. This is very simple, especially for those who are tech savvy. You can share. share. You can share. Uh, for those of you who are online on uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, and Twitter and Snapchat uh, and all them other things that we own, I hadn't learned Snapchat yet. Uh, I'm, I'm working on snapping and chatting or ch <laughs> chatting and snapping. I don't know which order you do them in, but... Uh, Every church ought to have a Snapchat <laughs> of some sort. And you can share information from your church, uh, from all of your forms of social media. You can, you, can, you can share. You can share. You can direct people to our website and uh, direct people to what we have on social media. Um, and then, see, some of y'all, not none of y'all in here, some of your cousins, we're not friends on social media. And uh, you haven't liked the church's Facebook page. Uh, for those of you who are not that familiar, when you like a page, that means you stay connected with that page. And the reason some of y'all are not connected to your church on social media is because you got some stuff on your own page. And you don't want your church folks to see what's happening. <laughs> Just go and start another ratchet page. And connect with your church on a page that you can share. <laughs> ah, Jesus. On the church page, give us your name. You can be cinnamon on your other page that you decide. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know you won't. So share, share the connection that you have with your church. Share it with other people. Hey, let me give you another one that you can do. Another thing that you can do to allow God to use you to turn the world upside down so that he can turn it right side up. You can smile. You can smile. 
Nobody wants to go to a church where people look mean. Amen. Where, where it looks like you've been baptized in lemon juice. I, I, I don't want to be around you uh, if you're looking mean. Uh, that's why we try so hard as a church uh, to see to it uh, that things are comfortable uh, for you all when you come uh, into the Lord's house. Because I want you to be able to smile like some of y'all were looking cold right now. So I made some adjustments <laughs> with the I have an app on my phone that allows me to make adjustments. So I made one or two adjustments. And if you start looking hot, then I'll make some more adjustments. Because I want you to be able to smile. Let's try it one time. Oh, y'all can do it. Well, bless the Lord. You have smiled. Your smile muscles work. Well, thank you, Jesus, that you can smile. Because if somebody is visiting your church, they want to know you happy about being here. Because if everybody who's already in here looks mad, I don't want to be. Most folks have left enough madness at the house. They don't need no new madness when they're looking for deliverance. So smile. Hey, let me give you another one. This one is easy. It's important too. Say amen. amen. Ain't nothing like it. To say amen to a preacher is like saying sick him to a dog. Amen. Preachers love to hear amen. amen. Hey, that does not mean that we are preaching for your response. But it helps the dialogue. If when you hear the truth, you acknowledge the truth that you heard. Just a simple, amen. Preach, Reverend. Say it. You own it. Come on, I've been in church all my life. I know all the stuff that people can say. I should have added another, added another one in this list. It's not in the list. Stay awake. Should have added that one in there. Don't 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 sleep through it. One preacher was up preaching. Some folks were dozing off, and the preacher stopped the service and say, "Hey, tell that fella next to you to wake up." And the fella shouted back, "You put him to sleep. You wake him up." Well, I hope I'm trying to do the best I can not to. Not to give you night all when you come to the Lord's house. But you can say amen. amen. Amen simply means I agree with what you are saying. Amen. Amen. You ever gone to the movies and you're not really paying as close attention to the movie as you should, but all the people around you are laughing and you start laughing too and you don't even know what you're laughing about? <laughs> Some of us know what it's like to walk into a room. You, you visit in your family. You walk into the room and everybody's laughing. And you start giggling too. What y'all laughing about? And they say, girl, you never guessed. So and so did this, such and such did that. And oh, we just thought it was so funny. Now, if you walk into a room and they're laughing and when you get in, they stop. You might not want to go back in that room. You can say amen. Hey, let me give you another one. You can greet. You can greet. One of the reasons we acknowledge all of our guests is not just because they are important to our church, but we acknowledge our guests so that our members can see who the guests are. All some of us want to do is talk to each other. Instead of greeting new people who are trying to get to know you. You already know each other. Y'all got each other's phone numbers, emails, Instagram account, all that. Y'all can talk after church. But when you're trying to get to know people and build a fellowship and a relationship with them, you can greet them. Find out who they are. Find out what has helped to bring them to our church. 
How did you hear about the church? And sometimes you can learn some fascinating things. One of the most fascinating things I've learned about this church is that a lot of people who are directed to this church are directed by people who go to other churches. But they're not proud of their own church or they're very loyal to their own church. But when people tell them what they're looking for, they send them here to our church so you can greet. Now, here's this last one that I need some real saints to help me with, to hope me with. <laughs> hope is the past tense of help. I need some real saints to hope me with this last one. Because uh, first one was you can pray, you can invite, you can share, you can smile, you can say amen, you can greet. Here's the last one. Children of the most high God. <laughs> you can sit together. You can sit together. We bathe. We bathe. And one of the helpful things about doing ministry, and we'll talk more about this uh, in the weeks to come, uh, is we expand our video ministry. We've already made significant investments uh, in video. Uh, we now record in 4K. Um, last Sunday's Easter presentation was a little over an hour long. The everything, the sermon and everything. I went back and thought about it. I say that from the time that the service actually started until the time that it was over was about uh, an hour and 15 minutes on Easter Sunday. I wondered if somebody felt cheated when they left and say he didn't give us but an hour and 15 minutes of church uh, on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, the rendering process, that's how the computer uh, takes all of that video information and arranges it in a way that we can share it uh, on uh, the church's YouTube page uh, or link it to the church's website. The computer took 25 hours just to put that one video project together because we record in the highest quality of video possible. It is 4K. So uh, if we're making investments in that kind of equipment, we need you to help us tell our story. Because of the way that our church is arranged, if we put a camera in certain places, they won't be able to see everybody. Uh, so if I put a camera over here, they just catch the heads that are over here. But if I can get every, I don't want you to do it right this minute, but if I can get everybody to move as close to the front as possible, then when we take these new cameras, we're able to capture everyone's image all at the same time. And you ain't got no warrants. Ain't nobody looking for you. So it ain't, it ain't like ASO and GPD are just studying our videos to see, to see where y'all at. So we can sit together. Amen. So we're in the process now of adding additional cameras. We're already in, in, engaged heavily uh, in that process, just working out the financial aspect of it. So very soon, I'm going to ask you to change where you sit. And I'm going to need some more front seat sitters. Because y'all so far back from the pulpit, even if I spit on you, I can't reach you. Because I don't know why people don't like sitting close. We don't throw stuff in this church. Uh, we throw fits, but we don't throw stuff uh, in this church. God needs a personal contribution. That's not all. God needs a corporate contribution. Let me breathe a word about this quickly. The personal contribution is what each individual believer needs to be doing. But there's some very specific things that we're going to be doing as a church. The first thing that we're going to be doing, I've already met with our planning team. We're already correlating dates and we've already uh, started the process of ordering uh, equipment. 
We're going to do neighborhood Sundays, neighborhood Sundays, so that when we come together on Sunday morning, it won't just be to worship in here. We will be doing neighborhood Sundays uh, that we'll fellowship with our neighbors outside because the people we want to reach for Jesus ain't the ones in here. We want to reach people for Jesus Christ who are out there. And we want to do neighborhood Sundays so that on Sunday morning, we may come in here and talk for 10 minutes, but everything else will go on out there. We'll be playing good gospel music. I have a Spotify account on my phone. That's one of these services that allows you to play music. Uh, and mine, my playlist is just full of all these gospel songs, just full. A whole list of them, H.B. Charles, uh, James Cleveland, uh, Israel and Newbreed, just uh, John P. Key. All my favorite gospel songs are on this Spotify account. But then Spotify started making some recommendations to me. And some of their recommendations weren't gospel. They were old school R&B. And uh, one of them was uh, Anita Baker, giving you the best that I got, and sweet love. Don't let me take y'all back too far, because some of y'all will get stuck. And then some old school, older, older school stuff. I do have Sam Cook on there now. He's in the rotation. It's been a long time coming, but I know. Oh, that a change is going to come. Amen. I received that in Jesus' name. So what, what I had to recognize was is I didn't need to try to mix in the R&B uh, with the gospel. So I left the R&B alone. It's ready. Right you can check it. Ain't no R&B on there, but it's, it's full of gospel. So outside on Sunday morning, we'll be playing gospel music for our neighbors. We'll promote it well. We'll have bounce houses, basketball, cotton candy, you name it. We want to have it on Sunday morning for our neighbors a minimum of four times a year. So that you can come dress down, won't need a tie and jacket and all that, and come and just have a great time of fellowship and get to meet our neighbors. Jesus was not that big on inviting people to church only. He took the church to them. And when he took the church to them, he didn't go to them with Bibles and bottles of oil. Read your Bible. He didn't go to them with little green New Testaments. Jesus didn't hook up a truck spraying all on everybody. He connected with them through fish sandwiches. Because most everybody can appreciate a good fish sandwich. <laughs> I know I can, especially if it's catfish or brim or speckled perch or Nile perch. Okay, all right, let me stop. Neighborhood Sundays. Uh, then the next thing that we're uh, in the process of doing from a corporate perspective is school days. Uh, there are four schools where the children within a three mile radius of our church, there are four different schools that they are zoned to. One of them is Eastside High School, Lincoln Middle School, Lake Forest uh, Elementary, and Williams Elementary. And we want to do a day for each one of those schools. Now, let me tell you what these days are going to look like. Y'all ready for this? We want to go to the school. The superintendent has already given us access to the data uh, so that we know where children live and who children are. We want to go to each one of these schools and say to their school administration, give us the names of the 10 kids you wish would stop coming to school. Give us the names of the 10 kids 
that uh, uh, turning your hair gray before time. And we want to cultivate our own program within the church to work with those 10 children and their families. And for all the children who make it through the six week program along with their parents, uh, we're going to either give a shopping spree for, for school clothes shopping uh, or a Christmas tree or Christmas spree. Now, if they want to buy a tree, this might be on them. But a, a Christmas shopping spree uh, to those same children so that we're connecting with families. Then for each one of these schools, Eastside, Lincoln, Lake Forest, and Williams, we want to make a cash donation uh, to the leadership of the school because a lot of the uh, a lot of schools there's certain things they want to do but their school board budget does not allow it so if we can come in and help them do what they desire to do but have not been able to do uh, then we're able to reach them there uh, the third part of that uh, is to take perhaps their math science or reading department heads. Bring all the teachers from the math department, for example. Line them up right here across the church. Put a basket in front of them. Many of you, whether you know it or not, your children's teacher goes into their own pocket to buy school supplies for your children. Because there's not enough money in school board coffers in order to provide for the children. So here's what we want to do. We want to invite, for all four schools will do it at different times, uh, invite all, for example, everyone from the reading or math or science department, line them up across the front of the church. Give them a laundry basket. And beforehand, they would have given us a wish list of all the school supplies they need yeah. to help them to take care of their children. Yeah. And then a month in advance, I'm going to tell y'all what's on the wish list. Yeah. And then you go out with your bargain shopping self because some of y'all, yeah. y'all got this thing down yeah. to a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all squeeze a, a dollar so hard. George be hollering, yeah. trying to jump off the bill. So then a month or so in advance, I give you the list, the wish list uh, of what these teachers need. And then live and in living color on Sunday morning, the teachers stand up here with baskets. And one by one, y'all just get up from your seat and take whatever those items are and drop them in the baskets. So that when that teacher leaves, they leave with a basket full of school supplies. So that allows us to reach children. Parents, schools, administrations, teachers, and entire teaching departments all at the same time. Yeah. And the initiative is already paid for. Yes, yes, yes. Because we decided that the thousands of dollars we were spending on television, uh -huh. we want to spend those dollars directly on the families within a three to five mile radius of our church. Because I believe it's one thing to talk church, but something else to do church. And we've been talking church for decades. But it's time for us to do church. Now is the time. What does God need? God needs a personal contribution. God needs a corporate contribution. Here's the last thing and I'm done. God needs a consistent contribution. The biggest complaint from people that have nice things done for them is inconsistency. People who start something but don't keep it going. In Luke chapter 9 in verse 57, Jesus talks to his 12 disciples, but then he gives words of instruction uh, to the 70 beginning in Chapter 10. Look at Luke 9 and verse 57. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, 
but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. But he said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Another also said, I will follow you, Lord. But first permit me to say goodbye to those at home. But Jesus said to him, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And then in chapter 10, verse 1 through verse 11, he gives the words of instruction to the 70 who were going to follow him, turning the world upside down so that he could turn the world right side up. Now here's what the Lord just did. The Lord just gave you your walking papers. The Lord just gave you a whole list of things that you can start doing today. You don't need a degree. You don't need a collar. You don't need no all. None of that. You do need a prayer life. You might need a sheet of paper, a pen, or a crayon. You will need to utilize whatever form of social media that you're on. And you do need to support the simple things your church and pastor will ask you yes. to do. Yes. Think about stuff I asked you to, to do just now. Sharing things on social media. Inviting people to church. Participating in a neighborhood Sunday. Oh, you got to come and we're going to feed you. I, I got excited in my spirit right now when I heard feed. <laughs> Food, fun, fellowship, and then greet people that you don't know. One of the things we'll do at those events, we did it at the first one we did uh, on January 28th of last year. Uh, th there's special wristbands that we give out to all of our guests. They're neon green with the church's logo all around it. So when our guests register, when they come on site, everybody knows who the guest is based on the wristband. Here's what I'm getting at. You can talk to each other Sunday night. But when you're trying to reach people for Jesus Christ, one of the questions they are asking subconsciously is, can I get along with these people? Is there anybody in this church who's got a life like mine, some struggles like mine? Which means you can't be walking around with your nose up in the air. Like everything about your life is perfect. Come on now, you ain't fooling nobody. Every one of us in here got a past. And some of us got some presents. And we're going to have some futures. Which means we can, we can hope, which is the past tense of help. We can hope work on each other at the same time. When is the time? Now, now. now is the time. Because that other part I'm going to ask you to do real soon, that change in where you sit part. And I, I, here's what I don't want to do, Sister Vi. Sister Vi, I've been praying about this thing. Here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to turn the ushers into church gangsters. Because I thought about it. I say, now one of the things we can do, we can have the ushers rope off everything to force people like you pushing them through a cattle chute. <laughs> sit in, sit in, sit in, sit in. <laughs> then you get mad at the ushers. So I don't want to turn the ushers into gospel gangsters. <laughs> so I figured I'd just tell y'all up front what we need you to do and why we need you to do it. Yeah. So that as we tell our story through video and social media and things like live streaming, all of these are things that we can do as a church. Uh, I want to be able to show them who you all are. And the only way I can show them is if they can see you. Amen. And if you deep in the cut, 
They can't see you. So it's just a matter of changing where you sit. Now, if you get mad and want to leave faith because the pastor wanted you to sit somewhere else. I can't believe that preacher. I'm, I'm three times 71. I'm grown. Don't, know, don't nobody tell me where to sit. They tell you where to sit at Shands, the VA, Lachman County, GRU, wherever you work. They tell, you don't walk in there telling them people, I am not sitting at my desk. Y'all just got to deal with me. Today I'm working from the roof. I'm not sitting at my desk. Just put my computer up there on the roof because that's what I feel like doing. <laughs> you don't do that to them. You don't tell Walmart I'm checking out in the parking lot. Just send somebody to follow me because I'm not standing in this line. Y'all ain't got enough lanes open. And I ain't standing in this line. Catch me outside. Some of y'all know. All right, come on, we're standing, we're standing, we're standing. 